I'm Kara Gaddis, and joining me today is Chuck Ecker. It's Monday, January 11, 2010. Dr. Ecker, thank you for being here with us and sharing your memories. Um, a lot of people um, know you as the superintendent of schools in uh, Carroll County, and um, I don't know that a lot of people know that you were actually born here in the county. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's retrace um, the steps of your life and talk about Carroll County as we do that. Uh, your family is from Carroll County? Yes, we're from Carroll County. Uh, my, I was born and raised outside of Uniontown on the ridge on the way to New Windsor, about a mile, mile outside. My, my father was born in Carroll County. My mother was probably born in Frederick County, right outside of Union Bridge. They lived in the Frederick County and in uh, uh, Carroll County, uh, right on the edge of Union Bridge. Now, where are your ancestors from? Well, way back when, my, uh, on the Eckers came over from Switzerland in 1737. And the sailors, that my mother's name was Sailor, uh, they came over from Germany in 1728. Uh, and uh, so they were here about 100 years before Carroll County was formed. And uh, the, they, both Eckers and Sailors settled in Pennsylvania, the Eckers in Lancaster County, and the sailors in um, Chester County, uh, East Coventry Township, right outside of Philadelphia. Then the uh, Eckers moved pretty quickly to Frederick County, uh, and then the sailors, some of the sailor children moved uh, to Frederick County. Now, in those days, there was no Carroll County. Carroll County was not formed until, I believe, 1837. So, but they settled around uh, Union Bridge and um, uh, New Windsor. Uh, part, of, part of it is now Frederick County and part of it is Carroll County. You grew up on a farm in uh, Union Bridge. What was farm life like for a young boy? Well, I grew up in Uniontown, a little farm. Uniontown, I'm sorry. In, Uniontown, Uniontown. Little, a little farm. Uh, my father worked at the Lehigh Cement Plant in Union Bridge for a while and then he worked at the Let's feed. Um, cut that and start that over because I, I tripped over you. So let me ask you that question right. again. Um, Dr. Ecker, you grew up on a, on a small um, farm in Uniontown. Yes, yes we, did. we had, I don't know, about 12, 15 acres, uh, and uh, we had a cow or two, plus we had chickens and, and pigs. And um, I used to have to milk cows and uh, slop the pigs and gather eggs and feed the chickens. I had an older sister, and she was helping my mother with uh, housework around there and uh, had a big garden and putting up uh, vegetables and uh, canning things uh, and uh, making butter out of the milk and out of the cream we got from the cows and uh, so uh, from an early age I was working on the farm uh, in fact my my grandkids said where'd you go on vacation I said to the barn they did a barn I said you had to go milk and then in the summers uh, when I was um, probably in upper grades in the elementary school, and um, I used to go over to my grandfather's place, my mother's father, and he had about 25 cows and a big farm, and I'd milk, and that, that was a day you milked by hand. You didn't have these new fang dangle milking machines like you have now. Yeah, so uh, we, and of course on the farm uh, at home, we had the pigs, and we butchered, and. Uh, had all that, and uh, of course we had fried chicken every Sunday. Uh, we had to kill the chickens and and pick them, and uh, yeah. Now, was this pretty typical for Carroll County for uh, for other families in Carroll yeah, County? Yeah, I think so. It was pretty typical for the families that lived on a small farm, or even they, they had a few acres. They just they had some chickens or something. Uh, they, they, or maybe that didn't have cows or pigs, but um, yeah. Now, where did you go to school? Elementary school, I went to Uniontown Elementary School from grades one to six. We did not have kindergarten in those days. We then moved to Union Bridge uh, on Main Street, Union Bridge, still in Carroll County, and I went to seventh grade at uh, Union Bridge, Elmer Wolf. And then we moved to Westminster, and I uh, went to Westminster High School, and uh, the, the school that is now East Middle on Longwell Avenue, and I graduated from there. 
Now, Uniontown Elementary, the building is still there, but it's no longer in existence as an elementary school. No, that's right. It was closed years ago as an elementary school, and uh, the school system used it for a while, but then uh, for plant operations, uh, storage and things, uh, uh, but then we gave it to the county government. All right. And yeah. Elmer Wolf was renovated, I believe? Or? Well, Elmer Wolf, the old building was torn down, and there was a replacement building built right behind it, yes. And as you mentioned, Westminster High School was what is now East Middle East School. Middle, yes. I've heard you talk about your uh, great-grandfather and your grandfather. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, my great-great-grandfather, two greats on my mother's side, was the first mayor of Union Bridge. He, he was elected mayor. Uh, Union Bridge was uh, incorporated, or whatever the legislature did in those days, in 1872. And he, Reuben Saylor, uh, senior was the first uh, mayor of Union Bridge, and he served three years. And um, okay, let's talk a little bit. Let's go a little bit back to uh, going to school. Um, what was your class size like? We always hear about class size. Now, what was class size like back? We then? had pretty large classes. We probably had forty or so in the classes, and uh, we, in fact, uh, uh, second and third grade, we had one teacher. For the two grades, but uh, uh, we um, uh, we had rather large classes. All right, and yeah. then did the different schools come together to go to Westminster High School, the different elementary? Well, uh, Uniontown, uh, they went to New Windsor. All right. Students that uh, uh, went to New Windsor, uh, and so they did not come to Westminster. Okay. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, the, um, you ask about my grandfather. My grandfather on my father's side, uh, grandfather Charles Gary Lincoln Ecker, was a teacher in one room schools way back then. He was at uh, Fairview and he was at Boston and he was at Pipe Creek. And he also had three sisters that were teachers. And there were four, these children were teachers, which was really out of the ordinary. And uh, they taught uh, one at Medford and uh, some of them at Fairview, some at Wagner, uh, different one-room schools throughout the county. Throughout and, the county. Uh, yeah. uh, you still have a lot of Eckers in education now. Um, well, I have a grandson teaching in Carroll County right now, and he is the fifth generation of Ecker that, that, that taught here. Uh, my grandfather I taught at, at, at Boston at Pipe Creek and his three sisters. And my father, uh, he did not teach, but my uh, aunt, his sister, did teach. And uh, then, of course, um, I taught here. My brother taught here. Uh, my brother's sister teaches here. My son, the father, the, the one that teaches uh, right now here, taught here for a while. Uh, so the fifth generation of Eckers that teach here. All right. Uh, one other thing while we're talking about, I said uh, my grandfather was Charles Gary Lincoln Ecker. His father, Benjamin, was in Washington, D.C., and there's two stories. One, he was in Ford's Theater the day Lincoln got shot. Uh, another story is he was selling produce down there, and he got tied up in all the security measures and things like that. So. I really don't know which one's true. There's two of them in the history books about uh, him. But so then he named, uh, that was in April, and uh, Charles Gary Lincoln Ecker was born about three or four months later, and he put Lincoln in his name. So that's how the name Lincoln That's how the Lincoln got in about. there. Yeah. I've heard you mention a bell tower um, in Union Bridge. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, there was a, a bell uh, connected with uh, the collegiate um, uh, school there. They started a college up there in 1898 in Union Bridge. And it was in a rented space and had about uh, 15 students, I think. But it went over so well, they, they expanded and they got more students and they had uh, about three or four buildings up in front of Lehigh Plant. Just as you're going out of town towards Frederick County, it's um, on the left, there's a big commons area there. And they had a, uh, a a, t a bell in a tire there at, uh, they called it Blue Ridge College, but it really wasn't at that time, but it was a forerunner of Blue Ridge College. And um, in 1912, 
or I guess about 1910, Lehigh moved to Union Bridge. Uh, well, it wasn't called Lehigh then, but the cement factory. And it created a lot of dust and dirt. And the college just couldn't survive. They were right next to it. And the whole town was dusty, I understand. So Lehigh and uh, the, whatever the name of the company was at that time, and uh, the college, you know, they negotiated. And so the college decided to go to New Windsor. They moved to New Windsor, and there was a New Windsor College. They merged and called it Blue Ridge College. Now, is that what we now know as the Brethren Center? Yeah, it's the Brethren Center. Center. That was a former right. Blue Ridge College. And now, then it went, it merged with Bridgewater. So, uh, and uh, it's a Brethren um, church, I guess. Right. Uh, but anyway, they had a bell in the tower at Blue Ridge College in, in uh, Union Bridge. And in 19... 38, I think, with my grandfather uh, on my mother's side, uh, Isaac Saylor, was a foreman out at the cement plant. And he wanted to borrow the bell one night for a shivaree. Okay. What is a shivaree? A shivaree is uh, what they used to do when uh, couples got married. They'd go to their home the first night and ring all sorts of bells <laughs> and feed on pans and that sort of thing back there, sort of welcome, you know, they serenade him a little bit. Uh, but anyway, he borrowed the bell. He took it back and they says, why don't you keep the bell? So the bell, he put the bell on his farm right outside of Union Bridge and that bell was in there and, and my uncle, when my grandfather died, my uncle ran the farm. And then uh, when he died, they wanted the town of Union Bridge to have it. So um, my aunt uh, 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 gave it to the Masonic Lodge in Union Bridge because she was active with the Eastern Star and the Masonic Lodge, and so was my uncle. And uh, the Masonic Lodge then talked to the Union Bridge Business Association, and they took it over and uh, built a, a little brick housing for the bell, and the bell is now on display. It was dedicated uh, last June, really, uh, June of 2009, and it's sitting up there, and... Uh, it's inscribed and it uh, has on the plaque for, from Ike and Betty Saylor. That Ike was my uncle. And that. What was it like going to high school in Carroll County? Well, we walked. <laughs> <laughs> and we walked. Belt, you were still probably And <laughs> it was nice. Uh, it, um, the uh, Westminster High School didn't have a basketball uh, team, didn't have a gym until I think 42. Uh, I graduated in 45. How many were in your graduating class? 26, I think. It was, it was a, so uh, it's small compared to what it is today. Small compared to today, yes. It was about 26 in the graduating class, yes. All yeah. right. Now, you went on to college. You went to uh, what is now McDaniel College. Well, when I got out of the high school, I joined the Navy. And I uh, uh, joined for two years, and I served 22 months and got out early because they had some early dismissal. They wanted to cut back on money. So I uh, served two, uh, 22 months in, um, in the Navy, and I got the GI Bill, and I could afford to go to college. I went to University of Maryland for three semesters and then transferred to Western Maryland, and I got my bachelor's degree at Western Maryland. All right. What was um, Western it, Maryland like at that time? Well, it was uh, it was a nice little college at uh, a small enrollment, and uh, it was uh, a very, I mean, you knew everybody there. Even though I was a day student, I went home at night and had a job at Reed's Drugstore and uh, things, and, uh, uh, but yeah, you knew everybody. And uh, my wife went there and graduated the same year, yes. Let's talk a little bit about some of your jobs. You had some, um, be, before you became a teacher, you had some interesting jobs. Yeah, I had a few. Uh, I had a job at the Carroll Theater. And, uh, I was an usher or ticket taker and sometimes sold tickets. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting. The only thing is I got to see movies over and over <laughs> again, and uh, I got sick and tired of movies, no. But uh, now I worked there for a couple of years, and... Uh, it was interesting changing the marquee, putting the coming movie up on the marquee out there, particularly when it was rainy and icy. You had to take an ice pick up there and uh, chip out the ice out of the, the troughs to get the letters in and out, you know. 
and uh, but it was fun. And uh, also at that time they had a state theater too down close to uh, Bond Street, and uh, I worked down there some, not much, mostly at the Carroll Theater. And what were your duties as an usher? Well, you had to seat people and keep uh, law and order and uh, keep people quiet and things. And uh, uh, it, it was uh, just to just make sure people got their seats and things. And I guess it was one movie per night. One movie. Well, no, they had two. Most two? nights okay. had two movies. And then on the weekends, we had a matinee. Now, some nights, uh, there were some long movies. I remember Dragon Seed with Katherine Hepburn. Uh, we only had, it was a long, long, long movie, and we only had one a night there. And I've heard you say to this day you're not a Catherine Hepburn fan I'm not a Catherine that. Hepburn <laughs> fan. Although she's a tremendous actress. And the other jobs that you had while you were in school? Yeah, Bullock's. I worked at Bullock's. Uh, they did not have a restaurant at that time. Uh, Winnie Bullock had a, a butcher shop, and he had a huckster root in Baltimore. And one day I came home from school one Friday afternoon, my mother said, Hurry up, get ready. Yeah, you got to get your clothes. I got you a job. So, so Winnie Bullock picked me up, and I'd go out there on Friday afternoon. We'd fill orders. I'd eat out there, fill more orders, and then I'd sleep out there. And then Saturday morning, we'd up bright and early and go down to Baltimore, to Edmondson Avenue and the streets off Edmondson Avenue, and deliver uh, some uh, groceries and some uh, uh, meat that they had ordered and take orders for next week. And we're down there and uh, it was really very good because we always ate at a restaurant on Poplar Avenue and they had a good hot roast beef sandwich. That was great. Uh, when you graduated from college, you, uh, you graduated with a degree in education and uh, you became a teacher. Yeah, I started teaching at Torneytown Junior Senior High School and taught there for three years. I taught physical education and eighth grade science and I coached, uh, coached all the sports they had. They had uh, soccer, basketball, track and field, and baseball. I coached both baseball and track and field. In fact, my star pitcher was uh, won the state 100-yard uh, dash and 220-yard dash. Uh, any idea what year that was? Yeah, that was way back. I taught there from 51 to 54 okay. in the early 50s. And then in 54, I uh, applied for a teaching fellowship. I wanted to go get a master's degree. And uh, so um, uh, the first school that came through to University of North Carolina, I accepted there and I went down. I taught physical education and uh, took classes there for uh, a year and a half, three semesters. Uh, I've got my master's degree and started on my doctorate. And then my father died at the age of 51 and I came home to help my mother with three younger brothers. Right, now, was she still in Union Bridge? Was it no, we were living in Westminster, Westminster then. Westminster. Yeah, we were, we were living in Westminster. Is your house still there now? Yeah, we lived across the street from the Carroll Theater. Right, where, that was convenient uh, when you were Yeah, it really was. Uh, in fact, there's a, a parking lot uh, right next to the house. Uh, I lived in a double house, uh, and the parking lot uh, uh, is replaced a couple of houses there, and uh, but I lived in a double house just uh, on the railroad side of uh, of the parking lot, right next to the parking lot, and we lived there for a while, and then we uh, moved to um, Ralph Street. Mm -hmm. We lived on Ralph Street. Yeah. All right. So you said you came back to help your mother, and you've yeah. been in North Carolina. So what did you do career-wise? Well, point? I started teaching. Well, that time. My wife and I opened up a bake shop in town, uh, Rice's Bakery, which was a big bakery in Baltimore, wanted to have franchises around. So uh, we started up a bake shop, and uh, the, um, we did not, we, the only thing we broke bake there was frozen pies. Right. And uh, if we got the other baked goods from uh, the bakery downtown, down in Baltimore, every day it came now, out there. Now where was your bakery located? Bakery was located uh, about across from the fire hall. There's an alley that goes back to the parking lot, uh, and there was a, there used to be a, a, a little clothing store there on one side. We were right on the corner of that little alley. The alley's still there. It goes back to the uh, uh, parking lot. Right in but, downtown Westminster. Yeah, right in downtown Westminster. Yeah. All right. Did you continue on with teaching? Yeah, I uh, went to North Carroll High School. Uh, 
the year it opened, uh, it's uh, in the building that is now the middle school. But in 1956, that building opened, and uh, I taught there, and I taught physical education, grades 9, 10, 11, and 12, and also coached. Uh, we had three sports for a while. We had soccer, basketball, and track and field. And then some of the uh, students wanted to run cross country, so we had cross country, and I was cross country coach too in soccer. Right. And uh, we only lost about one soccer game in four years uh, there. And uh, basketball, we were 22 and one one year, and uh, lost in the state playoff. Yeah. So Carroll County had successful sports teams even even uh, back. In spite in the of the state. coach. In spite of the coach. All right. Um, at at uh, some point in time, you left the classroom and got uh, more into mi administration in the school system. Yes. In um, 1960, um, I became Carroll County's first supervisor of transportation. There was an unfortunate bus accident in the fall of 59 in Garrett County where a school bus was hit by a train, killing a number of students. And the legislature then mandated every county have a supervisor of transportation. In those days, only the bigger counties had a supervisor of transportation. So I was the first supervisor of transportation here. And I was supervisor of transportation for three years. And then I became assistant superintendent. All right. And, and who uh, was the superintendent at that point? Sam Jennis was assistant superintendent up until 1966. All right. Yeah, and uh, then George Thomas was appointed superintendent. And then in 67, I left Carroll County and went to Prince George's. Okay. Um, you were also involved with outdoor school, um, I understand. Yeah, we, we studied the outdoor school in 64, and we had a little committee, uh, and looking at the pros and cons, we looked at the outdoor school they had in Frederick County, uh, and we recommended to the superintendent and to the Board of Education that we begin an outdoor school in the fall of 1964, and they agreed, and we started it. It was... Um, we held over at River Valley Ranch outside of Manchester, the other side of Manchester, and um, did not have heated cabins, so we only had it for a few weeks in the fall and a few weeks in the spring. But uh, we started it there, and, uh, and that program is still continued today. More than 45 years later. Yes. It's, it's still yeah. a... a a uh, very recognized program. A yeah, very, very wonderful program. Uh, students love it. They and they get they learn about the environment, the ecology. They also learn about math and science. I mean, it's uh, it's a good program. So you left Carroll County, and um, you, what was the next step? I went to Prince George's County. Right. Yeah, and As assistant superintendent. I got. I was the director of business affairs, then assistant superintendent. And then I went to Howard County in 1974. And I was in um, Prince George's County in 1973 when they had a court-ordered busing where they had about 160,000 students in Prince George's County at that time. And we had 13,000 here. In fact, Prince George's County grew 13,000 the first year I was there. And that's all we had in Carroll. But in, in January 23, 1973, the court ordered us to uh, integrate and uh, uh, move, uh, bounce the enrollment between the uh, African Americans and the whites. And uh, about 40 some thousand students were moved from one school to another in mid year, and about 13,000 walked to school the day before. It was a massive, that massive undertaking. In 74, I went to Howard County as an assistant superintendent, then I became deputy superintendent, and then I retired in 1989. And you tell us how you came back to Carroll County. Well, in, in 90, I ran for county executive in Howard County and got elected, got reelected in 94. It's a two-term limit. And in 98, I was out of office. But in the summer of 2000, the Carroll County Board of Education asked me to come up here for a year while they looked for a superintendent. Uh, their previous superintendent took a superintendency job out in the Midwest somewhere. So I came up here for a year and... Uh, 
here it is 2010. It's ten a long years year. Later. <laughs> ten years <laughs> later. If I remember correctly, you came in as an interim and then did that yeah. for two years? I, I was an interim superintendent for two years, and then they said, do you want a four-year contract? And I said, why not? Let's do it. And then another four-year contract. Four -year contract. Yeah. Yeah. It must be very interesting. To it, you've kind of gone full circle. Started in Carroll County yeah. and then came back to the came county back as home. superintendent. So yeah. you've seen so many changes. Yeah, there's, there's been changed. a lot of changes over the years. Uh, for instance, that uh, Uniontown had a wonderful little uh, grocery store, little modern, but the best thing they had was homemade ice cream. Devil business, uh, Tom Devil business, and his wife, and then uh, his daughter took it over. And uh, but uh, one ice cream that's not there. That used to be the post office too. And uh, in fact, Uniontown almost became the county seat for Carroll County. When, uh, when it was formed out of Frederick and uh, Baltimore counties way back in 1837, I now think. Now, yeah. do you know how it ended up being Westminster? I really don't know, I think, bec uh, because of the railroad property and um, All right. transportation. Um, you've seen so many changes. What are, what are the changes that, that come to mind? Um, I'm sure there's so many. Oh, but, uh, oh it, it just, uh, well, a lot of changes. Uh, uh, buildings, you know, a lot, a lot of buildings. There used to be farmland. The building here, uh, uh, all over the place. Uh, houses springing up. Uh, uh, some businesses. We need more businesses in the county, but um, that's uh, the road network's not here for them. But uh, yeah, there's been a lot of changes and uh, uh, just getting around. Yeah, you, know, you used to come to Westminster on a Saturday night to do your shopping. So you'd see a lot of people in Westminster on a Saturday night, but now people shop anytime, anywhere, you know, right. and uh, it's it's uh, not that one night where everybody gets together. Yeah, gets together and, and yeah. shops. Of course, stores uh, used to not be open on Sundays either. That's right. right. Yeah, no, that's right. Um, and I'm sure the county is much bigger than, than it yeah, was. Oh, yeah. We yeah. Well, before. we had, we had 13,000 students way back when, and now we have about 28,000. Okay. Yeah. Now, and of course, we have kindergarten and twelfth grade. Back when I went to school, we didn't have kindergarten or twelfth grade; only had eleven grades. I guess that's part of my problem. Now, do you still have family living in the county? Uh, yeah, I've, I have some. Uh, my brothers and, uh, 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 live here, and, and uh, some of my ne nieces and nephews and cousins live here. Yeah. Do you ever get together and have family reunions? Yeah, we, um, well, as a small reunion, we get together, a family reunion, we get there every Thanksgiving and, and Easter. Uh, we have Thanksgiving at our house. We'll have 50, 60 people. And then my brother has it at Easter. Again, we'll have 50, 60 people and get together. We've had uh, larger reunions. We had a Necker reunion back in, I don't know, probably 2001. And then we had another in probably 2004. They brought in people from California, from Florida, Pennsylvania. Uh, one of my distant relatives has an almond farm out in Modesta, California. Yeah, and for your peanut bro uh, butter yeah, brittle that you make with those peanut almonds. Peanut brittle, yeah. And uh, also another relative, Charles Zecker, was in a, a, a film. Uh, he was a captain of a plane that was supposed to go over. Um, Puerto Rico and Cuba and bombed the Russians, and he didn't do it, and uh, because the president didn't want to do it, but he did it. But he was in there. Uh, he didn't play it, but uh, someone played his role. But he was Captain uh, Charles. Uh, yeah. And as you mentioned, you have a grandson who teaches in the school system yep. now. Grandson and and his wife teaches. His wife, so the yeah, Eckert also, teaching yeah. in, uh, um, tradition right. continues in Carroll County. Yep. Yeah. Well, Dr. Ecker, thank you very much for being here and sharing your memories. Well, it's a pleasure. It's, it's, it's a great county. I've enjoyed it uh, greatly. It was a good place to grow up, although I don't miss milking cows and <laughs> slop the pigs and feed the chickens, but it, it was fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it.